Indo-European, Aryan, and Indo-Aryan. These are terms you've probably heard used when talking about Persians. And while Persians today do speak an Indo-European language, sometimes described as Aryan, the DNA of Persians tells a much more complex story. Both modern and ancient Persian DNA reveals deep connections to civilizations that spoke entirely different languages, civilizations that were enormously influential on world history. So let's pull back the curtain and uncover how Persian DNA reveals ancient roots hidden beneath the modern layer of Indo-European identity. First, it's important to clear up some terminology. Persians are one of the major ethnic groups within Iran, but they're not the only people of Iran. Iran refers to the entire country, which is home to many different groups. Other West Iranic peoples like Kurds and Talish, East Iranic peoples like Pashtuns, and even Turkic groups like Turkmens and Azerbaijanis. So when we talk about Persians, we're talking about one group within a very diverse region. And when we say Iranians, we refer to all Iranians. Now, although Iran is located in Southwest Asia, Iranic speakers themselves did not originate there. Because the modern nation is called Iran, People often assume that Indo-Iranian nomads, Persians, and the land of Iran are one and the same. But that's not historically accurate. Indo-Iranian speakers are thought to have originated much further north, in modern-day Kazakhstan and southern Russia. Archaeologists link them to cultures like Andronovo and Sintashta. These groups were, in turn, offshoots of the Corded Ware culture in Eastern and Central Europe. The Corded Ware people themselves were a fusion of Yamnaya steppe pastoralists and European farmers from the globular amphora culture. To simplify, Indo-Iranian speakers were originally nomads with European roots closely related to early Germanic, Slavic, and Baltic peoples. They migrated eastward into Central Asia, where they became a distinct Indo-European branch. Based on ancient DNA, they carried haplogroup R1a, especially the Z93 subclade. Genetically, they resembled modern Scandinavians because they too descended from corded ware people. But when geneticists studied Persians, the results didn't match what you'd expect if Persians were simply descendants of those steppe nomads. Persians today don't predominantly carry haplogroup R1AZ93. In fact, they often show lower frequencies of it than Turkic-speaking Kyrgyz or Uzbeks, who live further east and are Turkic, not Iranic. Even more surprising, overall Indo-Iranian ancestry in Persians averages out to be in the 15 to 20% range. So how did this happen? If Persians aren't mostly descended from Indo-Iranians, then who makes up the bulk of their DNA? The answer lies in Iran's position as one of the world's great crossroads. Human groups have been living here since the very earliest migrations out of Africa. One of the most important was the Neolithic farming population of the Zagros Mountains, sometimes called Zagros Neolithic, or Iran Neolithic. These farmers carried a unique genetic mix, about 39% Zuzuana-related West Eurasian ancestry, 30% of Basal Eurasian, which would be highly similar to an initial out-of-Africa population, 19% of ancient North Eurasian ancestry, which is mixed in itself and was present over a wide area of the world, and 12% East Eurasian, Keep in mind that the East Eurasian ancestry here isn't like that of modern East Asians, but rather more similar to Andamanese hunter-gatherers and would have likely looked something like this. Over time, they received even more admixture from Anatolian farmers, Caucasus hunter-gatherers, and Levantine Natufians to the west, and from South and Central Asian groups to the east. By the Bronze Age, three cultural and genetic zones within Iran had emerged that would profoundly shape the genetic story of Persians. In the northwest, the Manaeans. In the northeast and Central Asia, the Bactria Margiana Archaeological Complex, BMAC. In the south, the Elamites. The Elamites lived in southern Iran and showed strong genetic continuity with Neolithic Iranian farmers. They had additional input from Anatolian farmers and Levantine Natufians, but crucially they lacked Indo-European steppe ancestry. They spoke a non-Indo-European language and maintained their identity for millenniums. The Elamites traded with the Indus Valley civilization, and some scholars suggest that Dravidian languages in India could have roots in Iranian farmers, perhaps through the Elamites or BMAC. The Elamites likely provided the genetic foundation for a large portion of modern Persians. Their language even survived well into the early Islamic period, where historical sources mention Khuz, a language distinct from Persian. Unfortunately, like many minority languages, it eventually went extinct under social and political pressures. The Manians, Northwestern Iran. The Manians established a 
kingdom in northwest Iran. One of the most famous finds from their culture is the Hassanlu lovers, two skeletons locked in an embrace. Genetic testing revealed that both individuals were male and both belonged to haplogroup R1b. This is significant because Manians carried steppe ancestry but not the Indo-Iranian kind. Instead, they had ancestry related to Proto-Armenians. To break it down, Indo-Iranian steppe ancestry carried European farmer input due to corded wear connections, while Proto-Armenian steppe ancestry came more directly from Yamnaya, lacking European farmer admixture. Manians also carried more Caucasus hunter-gatherer ancestry. Today, this heritage is visible in groups like Kurds, Tats, Talish and Gilax. Their Indo-European ancestry traces more to Proto-Armenian-like populations rather than to Indo-Iranian nomads. The BMAC, Northeastern Iran, and Central Asia. The Bactria Margiana Archaeological Complex, or BMAC, flourished in Northeastern Iran and Central Asia. Genetically, they were descended from Iranian Neolithic farmers, Anatolian farmers, and ancient North Eurasians and mixtures sourced from populations like Tutkol. Unlike nomads, BMAC people were sedentary farmers and goat herders. They played a huge role in the cultural and genetic landscape of Central and South Asia. They contributed ancestry to the Indus Valley civilization and may have even influenced its language. Today, all Iranic-speaking groups carry this ancestry in significant amounts. Here's where Indo-Iranians re-enter the picture. When nomads from the steppes began to spread, they mainly took two different paths. One branch mixed with Yenisean Siberians around the area of modern Altay, creating Scythians, who were a blend of Indo-Iranian, East Eurasian, and minor BMAC ancestry. But others instead migrated directly south, bypassing admixture with Siberians and instead heavily mixing with BMAC peoples. For example, an Iron Age sample from Turkmenistan shows about 55% BMAC and 45% Andronovo ancestry. This blend produced the Avestan Yaz culture, which combined steppe traditions with BMAC spirituality. Many scholars argue this culture deserves the label Aryan more than the steppe nomads alone since it gave rise to the religious and cultural systems we associate with Indo-Iranian identity. By the time Indo-Iranian speakers entered Iran proper, they were already genetically blended with BMAC peoples. And because Iran was a densely populated agricultural region, steppe nomads were always a minority. Farming societies could sustain far larger populations than pastoralists. This explains the patterns we see today. Indo-Iranian ancestry peaks in northeastern Iran reaching close to 30% in Khorasan province, but decreases in the former Elamite regions and is nearly absent in the Northwest. Their Indo-European languages spread primarily through cultural diffusion. Northwestern groups likely already spoke another Indo-European language and eventually adopted Indo-Iranian ones with minimal genetic replacement. Overall, Indo-Iranian steppe ancestry, as mentioned earlier, averages out between 15 and 20% in modern Iranians. The big picture is this. Modern Iranians show remarkable continuity with Bronze Age Iranians. Steppe ancestry added a layer, but it never replaced the native populations. Indo-European language and identity in Iran spread largely through intermarriage rather than replacement of the natives. This is not unique to Iran. Spaniards, South Italians, and Sardinians, for example, are mostly descended from pre-Indo-European peoples but speak Indo-European languages today. Language and identity don't always match the bulk of one's genetic ancestry. Yet, there was even less replacement in Iran than in Europe, as steppe lineages dominate paternal lineages of Europe, indicating selection for steppe males and native farmer females. In Iran, however, pre-Indo-Iranian paternal lineages are still in the majority and are more or less in proportion to their contribution of overall ancestry of Iranians. So, under the Indo-Iranian identity, Persian DNA tells a deeper story, a story of civilizations that thrived in Iran for thousands of years before steppe nomads arrived, and that still form the backbone of the Persian genome today.